Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Taylor and I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admissions at Norwich University. Um, I actually live in California in the, on the Peninsula area and so I work with all students on the West Coast, a few random states within the Midwest, but um, I'm kind of the point of contact for out here. I am originally from Vermont. I grew up there, went to school in New England, and then um, moved out here just a couple years ago. But today the presentation is going to kind of cover Norwich as a whole. And if you have any questions at the end, I'm happy to answer them. But we are America's first private military college as well as the birthplace of ROTC. The photo is kind of an aerial view of our campus during one of my favorite seasons, which is fall. Um, we own about 1200 acres. so We have plenty of room to expand, but we like to keep our relatively small size. As you can see, most of our buildings are pretty close together. We do own the face of a mountain, which is across the street called Pain Mountain and our students can utilize that at any time for different activities. So if you would come to our campus, you'd see about 2,300 undergraduate students. And to break that down a little further, one third of our students are in the Corps of Cadets who are seeking military obligations after graduation. The other third of our students are also in the Corps of Cadets but have no military obligations. They really just come for the structure and the leadership opportunities that the Corps brings. And the last third are civilian students. They're just traditional college students. They don't take ROTC. They don't wear uniform. They really just live the normal college lifestyle. We also have about 1,500 graduate students. You'll never really see them though because the program is mostly online. I was one of those students who received my MBA last year from the program. We do have a small group of students who stay on for a fourth year, um, for a fifth year, excuse me, in the architecture program. And then we are starting a new master's program which will also be on campus and that'll be a master's in athletic training. We represent over 45 different states, although we are located in central Vermont. Massachusetts is actually where we get the most number of applications from. It's not even Vermont. But a lot of people are surprised to know that Texas, California, and Florida are all in our top 10 states that we draw a lot of students from. Um, I have about over 10 states myself, and California is my number one. We also represent 20 different countries. If you know where Vermont is located, um, Canada is our biggest because it's literally right there. Um, but we do get a large number of students from China, Vietnam, Nepal, Peru. Well, we're always trying to explain our global population each year. So we've actually turned almost 202 years old coming this year. Um, and we actually started celebrating five years in advance when we turned 200 because it's a very exciting time. And by doing that, we made some updates to campus. So the top picture that you can see is our brand new building. That is Mac Hall. We built it from the ground up and we actually had students participate um, in kind of the construction and overseeing that project as well. It's a very collaborative building and we wanted to kind of reflect it how high school students are learning. So you can see in the middle picture, people are drawing on a big whiteboard that's on the wall. All the desks are mobile so you can put them together. It's, you know, a lot of schools um, and teachers don't like to be teaching in rows anymore. We like to see each other's faces and be able to communicate um, kind of face to face. We really emulated our buildings to reflect that. We also updated three existing buildings. We added a 100% artificial turf with a track around it and lights so we can host night games. And we also added some different majors like a Bachelor of Science in Psychology, where before we only had it in the arts, a neuroscience science major and an international business major. If you, um, you know, leave the Zoom today and forget everything I said, just try to remember this one slide. This is pretty much Norwich in a nutshell. Uh, we have over 30 different academic programs, over 80 different clubs, activities, and organizations, 20 varsity sports at the Division Three level, over 900 opportunities for leadership training. We've counted them all. That's how I can confidently tell you that number. We offer the Corps of Cadets lifestyle in all four branches of ROTC. So when we were thinking about our students, we were thinking about, well, what makes our students different than any other student at any other school? And that they're very hands-on active learners. You know, going to college is so much more than just sitting in a lecture or reading a textbook, um, but it's how you actually apply the knowledge, which really makes a difference. So we've broken down our majors into different schools. We have the College of Professional Schools, the College of the Liberal Arts, the College of Science and Mathematics, and the College of Graduate and Continuing Studies, which again is online. So I'm not going to go through every single major, but I did want to have them up so you guys can see them. 
our School of Architecture and Art, it's our four plus one program. So students come to Norwich for four years, receive their bachelor's degree, and then return to campus for one more year to receive their master's. It's more of an accelerated program, as this would take most students up to seven years to accomplish, but we do it in five. Um, our Computer Security and Information Assurance program, incredibly popular and also ranked number two in the country for that program. Our students have had a lot of opportunities that a lot of adults won't even get, um, like being the cybersecurity monitors for Super Bowl 50. And they also did it at the national championship football game with Clemson and Alabama a few years ago. So these are all things that a lot of them are set up through our alumni connections. Our David Crawford School of Engineering is our flagship school. Um, so you can see the different kinds of engineering that we offer as well as construction management, which kind of wraps all of them into one and puts a financial aspect on it as well. Our School of Nursing is our most competitive program. It has the strictest requirements, um, but we actually have three years worth of clinicals. So actually getting to work in the hospital as opposed to two, which most programs have. Our School of Justice Studies and Sociology has our criminal justice major in it, and that is our most popular major on campus, and it does require an internship for graduation. So students, you know, we always send them to the three-letter agencies, we, they work with police officers, and we actually have um, an internship coordinator specifically for criminal justice. These are where the other criminal or the other, excuse me, liberal arts majors are housed. The Studies of War and Peace is a military-based history. And these are where the hard sciences are held. We also have a pre-med, pre-vet, and pre-dental track where you work with an advisor and you know, make sure you're taking the courses that um, those schools would be looking at if you apply after graduation. So when we talk about our student to faculty ratio, a lot of people throw these numbers around, but basically it means you're never gonna be in a classroom full of you know, 200 students. You might be in a classroom full, full of 25 students in your English 100 class, um, which is pretty comparable to a high school classroom. So you really get to know your, you know, your peers, your faculty and staff, and those are the people who you really want to go to when you need a letter of recommendation. If you need a reference for your resume, they really know you not only on your academic side, but they can attest to your character, which is very important. Like they know if you're not in class because they can see your face every day. Um, so it is a very close knit environment. We do have honors programs for students who are looking for an extra challenge on top of their coursework and our academic achievement center, which is your opportunity to get additional help with no additional costs. Um, so you have access to peer and professional tutors as well as a writing center. We have a full-time internship coordinator at our Career Development Center, and they're there to help you work on your, inter or your resumes, work on your interview skills, your cover letters, and they'll also help place you um, in different programs, sometimes where we've previously sent students, help you navigate through a new city um, or an internship that you know, we aren't familiar with, and also make those connections with alumni. We do have study abroad and study away options. They're on pause at the moment, um, but our study away options is basically a Norwich curriculum picked up and put somewhere else. So our architecture students go to Berlin, Germany. We have one in Denver, Colorado, Washington, DC. They were working on one in the Virgin Islands for our criminal justice program and Strasbourg, France, right before the pandemic um, did hit. So those are definitely in the works, but it's nice to kind of get that global perspective while making sure you're still having that Norwich-based curriculum. Our students are very civically minded and we do have opportunities to volunteer for scholarships and undergraduate research opportunities. That's your chance to get published before you graduate. It does look really good on a resume. Um, and if you are granted one of these opportunities, Norwich will pay for you to stay on campus over the summer. So thinking, you know, after I spend four years at Norwich, where am I gonna go after that? Um, we do have a 96% placement rate eight months after graduation. So that means students are either full-time employed, full-time enrolled in graduate school, or have gone on to commission into the military and about 58% of our students will go on to commission. So I do mention that we do have two different lifestyles on campus, two thirds core, one third civilian. All in all, they're all Norwich students there to get a degree. They're in the same classes together. They can study together. They're on the same sports teams. Everyone has leadership development opportunities, whether you hold a rank in the core or you're an RA in the residence halls, and they all live by the same honor code. Students just chose a different path. One wanted a more rigorous lifestyle, very structured, um, 
you know, some students may want to pursue the military and others don't. They just want a normal college experience, but still hold the same values um, that North values. Some of the things that you can get involved with for leadership opportunities is the Campus Activities Board. And so those are the students who make fun things happen on campus. So they'll have parties, they'll host hypnotists, comedians. In the fall, they actually have a blow-up screen, which they put on our WISE Campus Center Green to host movie nights. In the winter, they freeze that over um, and make it an ice skating rink so you can play pickup hockey, you can just go skating. There's always something to do on campus. The student government are the ones who make changes to campus. Um, so if there's something that you don't like or you think could be improved, you bring it to those students and they bring it to the proper people to make those adjustments. We do have volunteer and community service opportunities through our Center for Civic Engagement, as well as youth mentoring, which kind of, um, you know, has a lot of the younger kids from Northfield and the surrounding town. They bring them to campus, get paired up with a big kid and kind of get to what, experience what college would be like and hopefully inspire them at a young age. We have over 80 different clubs, activities, and organizations. You can start one yourself. It only takes two people to start a club. We do have military-based clubs like drill, cavalry. We have the oldest collegiate marching band. A lot of people like the paintball club and the airsoft club, and we have a range on Payne Mountain. There are club sports teams. If you're just an outdoorsy person, you can take out mountain bikes. You can go snowshoeing, all from the Shaw Outdoor Center. If you're interested in music, drama, there is really something for everybody on campus. If you're interested in playing a varsity sport, I recommend reaching out to the coaches early on to let them know that you'd be interested in recruiting. We are at the Division III level, so that means we don't offer any athletic scholarships, but our students are still very competitive, especially our men and women's ice hockey team. Over the last couple of years, they've won many conference championships as well as national championships. Our men's rugby competes at Division II and women's at Division I. I played lacrosse in college and I found it was a really great experience um, because it taught me a lot about time management, so I had to be able to balance my academics um, and my extracurriculars, but all in all, I was there to get a degree. But it it did keep me active, it gave me a solid group of friends, and it allowed me to still be competitive. And this is where we kind of transition into the core of cadets lifestyle. It is very different than a traditional college experience. Um, it's rigorous and you really do live the 24-7 military lifestyle. And your first year is your year of rookdom. It's unlike any other year. You're pretty much like bottom of the totem pole. It doesn't require any experience because everyone comes in on a level playing field. So if we have students who have never taken JROTC. We've had students who take four years, captain of the lacrosse team, etc. Um, but everyone comes in on the same playing field. You learn a lot about time management because we tell you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. So if you're someone who thrives in a structured environment, this would be a really great opportunity for you because you always have to be doing something. Um, you have a lot of teamwork, but you also have a lot of personal responsibility. So if your bed looks a mess, that is your fault. But if your roommate's bed looks a mess, that's also your fault too um, because you know you're one and the same. You do have the opportunity to move up every year. A lot of students do take that opportunity because it does give you leadership experience. Um, some students don't want to, and that is totally fine, but you do have that option. So how we view ROTC in the Corps of Cadets, ROTC is a college elective, so all cadets take it. It prepares them for you know, service in the armed forces, for active duty, it's a lot of the book knowledge. You can take ROTC at the University of Vermont, for example. You go to classes a couple days a week, but they're just a traditional college student. If you're in ROTC, that means you're also a member of the Corps of Cadets. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Um, but the Corps of Cadets is a 24-7 military lifestyle. You live by military standards. You learn a lot about time management and organizational life skills. But that's where you also learn a lot about leadership. We, commit, we commission the second highest number of officers, second to the academies. Um, so, you know, when you leave Norwich, you're going to be expected to lead a group of people. How are you going to do it if you've never done it before? It's going to be kind of difficult. So this is where we really task you with those challenges now, whether you're leading somebody older than you, the same age, your best friend. Um, that's where we're going to throw those, you know, those challenges in your way. And hopefully you'll be able to adjust um, and work through them. So it'll be kind of second nature when you actually get out in the real world. These skills also help you whether you choose to go into the military or a civilian job. 
So um, a lot of students will apply for ROTC scholarships. If this is something you're interested in, you really want to start kind of the summer after your junior year, going into your senior year, but it's never too early to start gathering these things and thinking ahead um, because you do have to apply to them all separately. They all have a different application, um, but it's an essay, your transcript, test scores. You definitely want to take them more than once. Um, you usually do better the second time around. And you apply to these scholarships as you're applying to colleges. So it does have you list, um, I think it's up to five schools that you'd want the scholarship to be sent to. So you also have to apply to those schools. Um, it's a PT test, which is different for every branch again, and an interview. And the interview is incredibly important because this is your opportunity, um, you know, to go to school very cost effectively, but it's also very competitive. You want to tell them why you're the best fit for this. Um, the answer is not because they'll pay for my college, but I, actually tell them why you're passionate um, and why you think you're you're a good fit. If you do earn one of these scholarships, it is pending the medical exam, which is the DODMERV to see if you're physically and mentally fit to serve in the military after graduation. So most of the branches do cover all of tuition. Air Force does something a little bit different, um, but typically they cover tuition, uniforms, books, fees. You receive a monthly allowance of three to five hundred dollars. So while the, you know, the branch covers your tuition, Norwich does something a little bit different where they come back and pay for your room and board through the ID White Scholarship. So I will never say it's a free education because nothing in life is ever free. Um, and you will, you know, repay them by giving your service after graduation. You know, they are very competitive, these scholarships. So if you don't get one, um, you still have an opportunity to come to Norwich and apply and compete for one once you get on campus. It is still competitive because there's only so many to give out, but you also are only um, competing against Norwich students. So when we think about the application process, um, you really want to start applying the beginning of your senior year. Our application does open in the summer, I believe July, um, going into your senior year, but really make sure you're aware of deadlines. Um, we are rolling admissions, so that means we don't have like early action or early decision. Um, everyone's assigned to a counselor, so I'm on the West Coast, so it would be me, and you typically hear back from us within 10 business days if we have all of your necessary materials, sometimes it's quicker than that. So we do have our own application on our website, which I mentioned, we are on the Common App, so it's a place where you can apply to multiple schools all at one time. We are free on both of them. Our priority deadline is February 1st, but we are cur currently still accepting applications for the fall of 2021. It does have you upload your transcript. So if you're a freshman, sophomore, um, you really want to start thinking of your grades now um, because colleges see every grade you've gotten since freshman year to your junior year. So we really do see everything and all of them do count um, because it all comes down to your GPA, which can help you earn scholarships. Test scores, um, I'm not sure what the status of them will be for the next coming years, but um, typically we recommend taking them more than once. You usually do better the second time around. You can also submit letters of recommendation. You can write an essay, pretty much pro provide us with any supplemental materials that you think will help strengthen your application. So like I mentioned, um, you know, getting good grades is very important because you can earn scholarships for them. At Norwich, all of our students receive an academic scholarship, which is based on your overall GPA. Um, this year it ranges from $22,000 to $28,000. So the better grades you have, the more money you receive. Um, so that really should be a good incentive to keep working hard. And what helps make up the rest of that is through our need-based aid um, package, very high level. Um, you fill out the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. Um, you put in your parents' tax information. It says, it basically spits out a number saying this is how much you can afford to send your student to school. We take that number and create a comprehensive financial aid package, and it can be of uh, federal and state grants, which you don't have to pay back. Loans, which you do have to pay back with interest. Any work study programs, so you can work and earn money, and any other scholarships or grants um, that we could award you. That's why it's super important to start getting those scholarships and start thinking about, you know, planning for your future way ahead of time. I am not somebody who did that. <laughs> um, I waited to like, you know, end of my senior year to start figuring these things out, and I wish I didn't. I wish I was much more proactive because I would have been a lot less stressed when I did it. Um, so I really recommend you thinking about it. Norwich is not the most expensive, but it's definitely not the least expensive, but we do want to make it affordable for everybody. Um, 
apply for scholarships throughout your community, your school, if you're in Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, really anything, start thinking of these things early on.